This definitely is not the video that I thought we would be making. So, yesterday we had ourselves the NHL post their three stars of the month of October. This is a pretty decent deal. I don't want to say it's like the most important thing in the world, but it's something that happens, you know. Every single month on the first, the NHL highlights the performances that they felt stood out the most in the past month, and yesterday there was a pretty interesting stir up amongst Red Wings fans because of this list. I want to talk about who exactly the NHL named on their three stars of the month for October, talk about the Red Wings, talk about disrespect, and whether or not any of that was present here. So, let's go over to the NHL's Twitter account and read who exactly it is they placed on this list. Here's the tweet on the social medias, Jack Hughes, Elias Pettersson, and David Pasternak have been named the NHL's three stars for the month of October. First star is Jack Hughes, who had five goals and 13 assists for 18 total points in eight games played. Second star is Elias Pettersson, with five goals, 11 assists for 16 points in nine games played. And then you have yourselves David Pasternak, 8 goals, 6 assists for 14 total points in 9 games played. If you scroll down, you can read some more of the stats here. Jack Hughes became the first player on any team to collect at least 18 points within his first 8 games of a campaign since Thomas Vanek in 2012-13. Wow, really? The last guy to have this amount of points and that amount of games played is Thomas freaking Vanek, of all people, a decade ago. Okay, you learn something new every day, that's pretty nuts, eh? But Jack Hughes, as we've been talking about the entire season, he has been lighting the league on fire. He's first overall in points for a reason, and he is like one of the top players in terms of possession time in the entire league for a reason as well. He's up here, number one, makes sense. Second overall, you have Elias Pettersson, who ranked second in the NHL with 5, 11, and 16 points in 9 games to propel the Canucks to a 6-2-1 October, and their best 9-game start to a season since 05-06. Included is a brilliant picture, a stoic Elias Pettersson staring down the camera. Okay, that's pretty good, I like that. And then you have yourselves... David Pasternak, who finished among the league leaders in plus-minus, tied for second with plus-nine, shots on goal, he was third with 42, regular goals tied for third with eight, and points, fifth place he had 14, to guide the Bruins to an 8-0-1 October. Now, the interesting thing about this entire stat sheet is, you had a bunch of Red Wings fans popping up on social media after this list was published, saying, wait a minute, the Red Wings got disrespected yet again. How is the NHL going to recognize some of these top players and not give any praises to Dylan Larkin or Alex Debrinket? And what I wanted to do in this video was just kind of go over the numbers, try to rationalize this entire thing, and see what other solutions there may be. So, if you take a look at the NHL and its overall points race, Dylan Larkin is tied for third with Artemi Panarin. The thing is, if you wanted to go out there and say that there is a negative on Larkin, it's that Artemi Panarin had his 15 points in one fewer game played. Larkin has 15 in 10 games, Panarin has 15 in 9. Okay, there's one argument against Dylan Larkin. Let's go over to goals. Now, Alex Dabrinkit is first in the NHL in goals, tied with Frank Vitrano. They each have nine in ten games played. Dabrinkit, though, has four assists. Vitrano has one. If you wanted to go out there and look at David Pasternak, Pasternak has eight goals, so one fewer than Dabrinkit, but in one fewer game played, too. Pasternak also has more points than Dabrinkit, since he's got six assists on the year. Another thing that I think bodes better in Boston Pasternak's favor is the fact that the Bruins did get off to a hot start, 8-0-1. The Red Wings, while they did have that five-game winning streak, did not end the month off on a high note. They struggled a little bit towards the end, they had some bad losses thrown in there, and as some of the Twitter users have satirically pointed out, Oh, quote-unquote, at least David Pasternak played the whole month. At least the Boston Bruins and the team that Pasternak is on had better results for the whole month. Like, 
That's a response that I've been seeing tossed around a lot there because there are a few Red Wings fans that I've seen make a little bit of a fuss about this top three list for the month of October saying, why is Larkin and Raymond not getting any recognition here? They're some of the best players of the month. Why did they get left off? And then some satirical replies are like, yeah, because they didn't play the entire month. Like there was a few games towards the end there where they were completely invisible and that line was shut down. And I feel like if you want to talk about consistency, these three guys at the top definitely did display most of that. And of course, you know, I'm not disrespecting the Red Wings guys. Like, I made a video just a few days ago talking about how the Wings are terrifying, and we've been talking about them after every game mostly, whether or not it's a good, worthy type of loss or a win or whatever. Like, we've been making the videos. And I think when it comes to arbitrary lists like these that the NHL forms just to get more engagement on their social media, having some longevity throughout the month is important to them. Having sustained team results is important to them. Vancouver, Boston, and New Jersey have all been winners this season, and that is one of the similarities that is a little bit more difficult to say about the Wings. They did have that win streak, they did end off the month on a winning note, but that slump in the middle of everything was pretty bad, and we noticed how much panic there was going on when we saw the Wings not show up in a game against the Boston Bruins. How the Red Wings just did not have their game against the Winnipeg Jets. As arbitrary of a list as the top three stars of the month seems to be, the results within do matter, which is probably why they formed the list in the ways that they did. I think that if you had paused the NHL season right after Dabrinkit and Larkin were on that five-game winning streak Red Wings team, where Larkin was number one in points, Dabrinkit number one in goals, if you had paused the season up then and said, okay, October's over, what now? Then for sure, Jabrinkin and Larkin would have been given the number one or number two spots on the NHL Stars of the Month. But to rationalize the way the list was done now, I feel like that third and fourth week, these are what really brought down Larkin and Jabrinkit in, if you wanted to say, the Stars of the Month power rankings. And for guys who are on winning teams like Boston's David Pasternak, putting them up there makes sense. I don't want to say that it's a bad pick to have Pasta in the top three. I'd say that Hughes and Pedersen were the pretty all right locks to have in there. I mean, I'm really biased, but of course, what are you going to do about that? Pasternak being in is a pretty okay choice, I feel. You could have made worse picks. If it was Panarin in there, if it was Larkin in there, it would have been fine. But for Pasternak to be on a winning team that still is finding ways to get the job done, that makes a lot of sense to me to place them into that ranking because of it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you think the Red Wings were disrespected with this list, with the top three stars of the month for the month of October list published by the NHL just yesterday? Would you rather have had Larkin or Debrinkat in this selection instead of a guy like Pasternak? If not, do you think they should have been in over a guy like Elias Pedersen? You can't get rid of Jack Hughes. That guy's first overall in the league. He's lighted the entire season on fire. So where exactly do you go here? If you're a Red Wings fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. How do you feel about this entire thing? Does it tick you off like it seems to have ticked off a bunch of other Red Wings fans I'm seeing all over Twitter especially? Is this that big of a deal? I personally can understand the outrage, but also don't really think it matters all too much. I mean, sure, you'll see these things pop up on Players Elite Prospects Profiles Awards categories, but at the end of the day... Who cares about the stars of the month, right? Like, in two, three, four years, nobody's really going to remember any of this stuff. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Red Wings, Larkin, and Raymond, not Raymond, excuse me, Debrinket, getting snubbed in lieu of Elias Pettersson, Jack Hughes, and David Pasternak. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.